Rubén, saludos y qué alegría verte y muchas gracias por el tiempo para platicar un poco sobre la nueva propuesta de siembra en vivo gracias. grabado allá no. en, en Puerto Rico. Eh, te diré, mm -hmm. I will tell you truthfully, during the 48 years I've been sharing your music, the one album that I consider your magnum opus, humbly, is Mundo, the one you recorded with the Editor's Ensemble, just because of everything that that album represents. But hearing this Siembra Live from Puerto Rico reminds me how historical that album is and how timeless all those songs are. And now hearing them with Roberto Delgado and the big band just made it very, very, very special. Your thoughts on the timelessness of Siembra? Well, first of all, thank you, Jose. Good to see you. Say hello to Divina. Everybody is listening. Thank you. Listen, the thing with Siembra, if anything, is a very powerful argument um, in favor of music and especially in favor of the salsa music genre. Mm -hmm. This These songs were recorded 45 years ago. We use the same charts. We They're recorded in the same tones that they were originally registers that they were originally recorded in. And yet, you, you if you if you're hearing it for the first time, You cannot uh, guess that these songs have 45 years are, are 45 years old. Mm -hmm. And I've been blessed also to have been able to have the vocal range to to do it to do the job. You know, usually as you get older, uh, your capacity, uh, your range diminishes. In this particular case, I I've been blessed with that opportunity to continue to sing. Uh, I would say now I'm singing better than when I was than when I started, mm -hmm. and so. But the fact that the fact that we had a a live recording at in Puerto Rico in the Coliseo de San Juan, full nineteen thousand people, and we could do these songs. We had a very long concert. We we played five and a half hours, because I was producing that show myself. It's probably the longest salsa concert by one band and one singer in the history of, 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 of shows, uh, salsa shows. So, but the fact that the songs are still relevant, uh, just point out to the, the, uh, the, the longevity of the, of the genre. You know, the fact that they to produce songs and, and uh, sounds that are appealing 45 years later. Not many, not many genres can say that. I don't know if 45 years from now people are going to be re-recording uh, reggaeton songs. I don't know. But I know that this is a fact. Siembra was done 45 years ago, and because it was written honestly and it was written with care to, to describe issues that are uh, issues that continue repeating themselves throughout uh, our lives and the lives of future generations, because we took the the time and the care to do this the right way 45 years later it still it, it it can it still has a voice it does have a voice and there's something in particular because when you introduced the first song plastico 45 years ago you share with the audience that was there at the coliseo and now those who will be listening to the album when it comes out on your birthday the fact that plastico is still relevant to the issues yeah. of today when it comes to materialism and things of that nature yeah And and not and, and siembra as well, mm -hmm. because we still live in the midst, we still have dictatorships, we still have social injustice, we still have corruption of, of, of governments, you know, we still have people that are unsure as to in which direction things are going to move. And the and the, the comment in siembra is let us all do it together, we can do it, but we have to be careful. And we have to work as a hand, not as fingers. Mm -hmm. We have to move together uh, to make it work. And we have to teach our our children so that we don't repeat. They don't repeat the mistakes that we have committed. There's a there's a beautiful touch to the album, and it's the participation of Luis Perico Ortiz on trumpet, who yes. few people know his special role in the beginning of your career with Willie both right. with Pablo Pueblo and then, of course, with uh, Plastico and Pedro Navaja. What was that like having Perico uh, on stage, especially in Puerto Rico? 
Well, first of all, it was it was something due. It was due to have that type of recognition to a man that is so uh, has been so relevant in so many ways to the salsa movement, and, and many people don't know these things. If people would assume uh, that, for instance, people used to assume that Willie wrote the music and I wrote the lyrics. It had to be explained to them that I wrote, I created music and lyrics. But then some people think, oh, then he did all the arrangements. And that happens sometimes, but not all the time. Luis Peri Cortis did the arrangement for Pablo Pueblo, which we recorded in, uh, originally in the Metiendo Mano album, which was my first album with Willie Colon. And he, Luis Peri Cortis, also is the arranger of, of, of Pedro Navaja. So there you have a situation where in Puerto Rico, I felt that since we were going to be doing all those songs, it was a perfect moment to, to give uh, Luis Peri Cortis publicly uh, the recognition he deserves as a wonderful uh, music arranger and also as a wonderful human being. He's a really nice man. He's a really good person. And um, so that's the reason why we we made it a point to bring him out and and, and showcase him in Pedro Navaja, which is a song that he had uh, arranged 45 years uh, earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful solo. And you mentioned that the arrangements were the same, the same tone, I, I will say. Two things impressed me when I heard the live recording. First, I agree with you. Your voice is, well, you haven't been singing for so long and then taking time off to do the other things you do. You've been acting, you've been writing, you do all these other things to get back on stage for five hours and your voice sounds as crisp and as strong hitting those notes. I applaud you and, and you are Thank blessed. You. God, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And, and, you then, and, and then second, Roberto Delgado's band, it's impressive. It is truly impressive and how they take those charts and give it that <clears throat> de calle, el sabor de calle, el sabor de la salsa neoyorquina de esa época y que to todavía se escucha hoy en día. I have to congratulate Roberto. The, the band really uh, met the challenge. Yep. I tell you that one of the things that pushes me is, uh, is the band. The band pushes me. Uh, it, it brings the best out of me. And... Um, as far as this, I, I tell you, I give you a, a quick anecdote. Because I, when I started, I, I was just copying Cheo Feliciano, and, and Cheo's voice was always like, the, you know, like a croon. It was a crooner, not a, a sonero así como Hector Lavo. La voz de Hector es más alta. La voz de Cheo era más abajo. Yo siempre copiaba a Cheo abajo. Hector called me once to do uh, as we, as usually would happen with different uh, different artists. Cho, um, uh, Hector called me to do Coro in one of his albums. So I went over and it was gonna be Hector, uh, I think it was uh, Alberto Santiago and myself. Mm -hmm. We were gonna be doing Coro. Maybe there was somebody else, but I, else, uh, but I don't remember. But then when we got to this particular song, Hector, Hector did not want, you know, he Hector's voice was high. So he didn't want to do the high voice of the of the three-part harmony because it was going to sound like him. Mm. And he didn't want that. He wanted to save his voice for the sonero itself, itself mm. not to be so recognizable in the coro. So I said to I said to him, I'll do it. I'll do the voice. And then Hector looked at me, looked at me and said, Can you do that? Can you go that high? <laughs> And I said, sure, I can. And I did it. And the song was uh, Rompe Saraway. Mm -hmm. So in Rompe Saraway, the word, Rompe Saraway, that's me. That's my voice. So what I'm saying is that I I had the possibility of doing of going a little higher than what I was recording at the time, but I chose not to do that. And I felt more comfortable singing uh, a tone lower or a tone and a half lower but it, it 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 paid off because as I got older, I still had had a voice to sing, and then as I sang, now also liberating myself from the cello influence, mm -hmm. I began to go wherever I wanted to go, and that included hitting notes. So that's why I think people will be surprised when they hear me now because they're hearing me and they're going like, "Oh, I did." 
that strongly. No, it sounds beautiful, and, and and you're blessed. God bless you on that. The the interesting thing of the album, yeah, and I hope you. that you will consider um, later doing a deluxe recording, a deluxe version of the album, because one of the things of your live concerts has always been your introductions to all the songs. You give context as to when you recorded it, why you did the, the song, et cetera, et cetera. And, and on this one, you know, the, the hearing you do the introduction of each song, la próxima canción es... Eh, Maria Leonza, la próxima. But if there's a deluxe version that may come out later where you have all of your introductions to the songs with everything that you say, count me as being one yeah, that purchased that album. Yeah, I think that I don't know why they didn't do that because I did it in each song. But when they were doing the um, when they were doing the record itself, I guess because I don't I my 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 belief is that maybe it was because of the vinyl because mm. in the vinyl you still have to have less than 22 minutes per side got it otherwise got it. then you would have to do four albums right right as it is right now the vinyl I, we couldn't do we didn't do more than an x amount of of songs per side mm -hmm. so because it starts losing pot potency right and right. Because we, because basically, I also I think that somebody thought that it would be best if we just did it did it quicker. But I my my feeling was that the explanations at the beginning of each song uh, are important, and we, and I always do that. And I don't know yes. why they didn't include them. Maybe we can do another version where they are included. That'd be sweet. It'd be the Siembra Forty Five yeah. Deluxe Deluxe, where it'll be you know the special edition. Ruben, you uh, you're on tour right now. I know you're going through Spain. You'll be going to Latin America, and then you become the United States. We look forward to seeing you in New York when you come. Thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be in your company. Thank you for your time. I know you've got some other folks who are lined up to interview you, but congratulations and thank you for sharing this great album and this great music live from Puerto Rico. It's a very special album. Forty five years of Siembra. Thank you, and uh, thank you on behalf of the band Roberto Algao and the group. And I want to thank also Puerto Rico for allowing us the, the opportunity to record and uh, and and be with us during uh, during this very very special uh, evening at the Coliseo San Juan in Puerto Rico. Te queremos mucho, Rubén. Bendiciones y un abrazo, Daniel. Gracias a ti también. Salud. Gracias, papá. Saludame a Marilina. Será bien recibido. Marilina.